Our next guest is sometimes referred to as the Santa Claus shooter in Detroit. After he was involved in a self-defense shooting right before Christmas, his real name, though, is Marcus Allen Weldon, and he joins us live today. What's going on, Marcus? What's going on, Coleon? Doing pretty good, doing pretty good. So, man, let's jump, let's jump right into it. So, so, so talk us through what happened that day. Well, you know, it was a, it was a very, it was a very crazy and emotional experience back in 2014. Um, I was helping a coworker. Both dressed in Christmas outfits, leaving work, and then we had an encounter with two men that uh, one of them was harassing her, uh, a bit intoxicated, and it escalated to uh, a actual from a phys- physical confrontation to me intervening, and it ended up becoming a, a conversation between me and the individual where. He, he decided to get his firearm, and we had actually had a shootout in the parking lot. Wow. So it turned into a full-blown shootout. Yeah. It turned into pretty much a full-blown shootout. There was evidence that actually uh, that was uh, led to um, the nine actual witnesses that had said that there was uh, multiple gunfire, but when by the time the police arrived, there was, uh, there was no gun to be found. The videotape ended up showing uh, the other individual run into the dumpster. So that leads us to believe that that's possible where the other gun had went. We asked the police department, did they, hey, did they check the scene? And of course, that was a no. So, and, with this, and with the grainy video we had, it was very hard to tell what he grabbed out that car. And it was this choppy and it, the evidence was all just really distorted. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so I wanna, I'm gonna start hyper-focusing on some of the, some of the, 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 the incident that happened. So. At what point did you decide to make the decision? I'm, I, well, first of all, how often do you carry and, and were you always carrying in those situations? Yeah, I always carry my firearm. Um, I've been carrying for six years. Mm-hmm. Um, I lost a close friend in street uh, in, in, uh, in violence. Uh, it was a carjacking. He was actually killed and murdered and took the police department 30, 30 minutes to get to his body as he bled out his mouth and back. And um, at that point, I realized. You there? I think we're it was up to me to be proactive for my safety. Be get. Okay, well, I think we're having some. Me? Yeah, well, I think you cut you cut out for a second. So go so go back. I think the last thing we heard you say was uh, you were talking about how he was. Uh, it took the cops thirty minutes to get to his body. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, I had lost a close friend to street uh, uh, carjacking. Mm-hmm. You, hear, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I, I can hear you. Okay, yeah, I lost a, I lost a close friend. Uh, he was carjacked and murdered. And um, that's when I realized it was up to me to be proactive with my safety because law enforcement, of course, can only be reactive. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a big point um, that a lot of us here in the gun community always point out and like to point out. Um, and, and I think it's unfortunate sometimes because it's like it takes incidents like these to get some people to realize the reality of our world. Um, uh, other people just tend to come to it on on their own. Um, but unfortunately for you, I, yeah. mean, I hate the fact that you had to lose a friend, you know, in order for you to get to this point. Um, but uh, uh, how long after that and processing the death of your friend did, did you make that decision to start caring? Right after. I mean, as soon as he passed, I went straight and got my license and got straight into the class. You said you said as, Im- immediately. Soon, it was almost a week uh, mm-hmm. immediately within a week. Gotcha. And so 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 that day, um, what I, I want to get into your head for people who've, who've never really experienced something like this before. And just can you talk yes. me through what what's going through your mind at that point? And then when did you hit that that snap? Not the snap decision, but the the immediate point when you realize I'm going to have to escalate this higher than I've ever had to before because this person has ta- has has forced me to get to this level. Yeah, well, when I seen that when he went to the vehicle and started reaching under the seat, gotcha. that's when I knew that it was time to make a decision. Um, I didn't. I was trying to back up and get out of there. I didn't fire my firearm. It's- okay, okay, I think we lost you again. He did a full turnaround. And I seen the uh, the black gun in his hand. Right, my first shot. So do do you remember? So when you saw yeah. so so when you saw the gun, a lot of people talk about when they're in these situations, you get you kind of have this tunnel vision. 
Um, do, do you is that something that you experienced yourself, or were you able to kind of pull in all of the information going around going on around you, or was it just kind of like all you saw was the gun? I blanked out. I mean, it was like a tunnel vision. Dev, I blanked out. I didn't really. Um, it was kind of one of them things where, like, you know, you're in a nightmare and it's mm-hmm. like a tunnel, like you said, tunnel vision. I, my emotions and adrenaline pretty much bled out of my pores all at once, and yeah. I, I instantly became lightheaded and dehydrated. Wow. And really, really torn apart inside emotionally, and uh, and it, it really is. It was a traumatic experience, to say the least. But the the thing I kept thinking about honestly was my daughter. Yeah. So. At any point during this altercation, did you did you think you were hit? Did the guy get off any shots? Was it was it one of the deals? Did like did you ever think that you were actually hit? No, I, I you know when I first I was looking at my firearm as it, as I was uh, discharging it, and I it was crazy because when I, I was looking at my firearm the whole time when he really? when I was shooting, I couldn't believe I was shooting. So I was looking at my gun the whole time, and then I heard return fire, and I'm looking like is he shooting back? So I look up, and then you know I I'm walking. And it just became like a point where I thought that the girl was hit because uh-huh. she was screaming, and I thought maybe I was in shock. Gotcha. And wasn't gotcha. sure if I if I actually was was hearing this right. I was like, is he shooting back? Is he not? I mean, what you know? I was. It was just like like I said, a dump of adrenaline that just came out. Yeah. And I didn't even know. If, honestly, I didn't know if I hit him. I didn't even know I hit him or not. Yeah. And so. It- so prior to this, had you had you really trained for an encounter like this? Was this something that you thought about in your mind leading up to this event? Like, I know you can I mean, of course, you didn't know this was going to happen. But in terms of like you carrying concealed, did like were there courses that you took that you trained to to, to kind of prepare you for a situation like this? I was not proactive and uh, like I should have been with my mm-hmm. training and which is why the, I, I felt it was very imperative to. Uh, get the education uh, from the gun community because I was not involved like I should have been. Yeah. I, I was not proactive, and that's something that I, I uh, definitely regret. But I had I was going to the range, you know, I say about once every month, month and a half. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, something that could have definitely been more more proactive with. Gotcha. So thinking back, thinking back to that time, what? Is there anything that you would have done differently leading up to after the fact? I think I may have. Oh, okay. You want me to repeat the question? Yeah, I'm sorry. Repeat the yeah. question. Okay. So, is, is so thinking back to that to that day, is there anything that you would have done differently before? Um, now that knowing what you know, is there anything you would have done differently before you got to that point? Well. I definitely wouldn't have been at the gas station that late, even though it was mm-hmm. a situation where I was trying to help somebody. Um, that's one thing. Another thing, I definitely would have, um, you know, the de-escalation tactics that you need to learn in fire before using your firearm is something that's very essential as well. Yeah. Um, maybe there could have been some more verbiage I could have used, but by the man being intoxicated, I'm not sure, yeah. you know, if it was, uh, I'm not sure where his head was. And, um, you know, it was really hard for me to kind of like think in that moment. But if I had been training like I felt like I should have been, then maybe I'd have been able to think on a dime, drop of a dime like that. Gotcha. Now, how's the relationship with uh, with, with the girl? Are, are you two guys still in contact? Um, I yeah, I don't have I haven't had a conversation with her in about a couple of weeks. But, you know, I, you know, it was we kind of follow each other on social media. She mm-hmm. sends me messages every once to say every once in a while and say, how you doing? But uh, the friendship is still there. Gotcha. And so now I, I, I want to talk about the after effect, because I think that that is probably the one, of the most, yeah, one of the one of the most important aspects of your story is, is the, the process that you yeah, went the, through in terms of dealing with and dealing with the shooting, because I think a lot of people tend to underestimate that. So let's let's start talking about we got about a minute before we go to our break. But let's let's kind of get into that a little bit and then we'll take a quick break and then we'll come back. So. Immediately after, so after the shooting happens, what what do you mm-hmm. do? Well, immediately after the shooting happens, I get uh, ushered away to jail. First of all, uh, the police draw draw their firearms down on me, and I have to get on the ground. I get the handcuffs the handcuffs put on me. Mm-hmm. I'm still trying to process what's going on, and I get ushered away to jail and have to sit there for about close to four days to wait for uh, the, for the, the the them to post bond for my family to post bond and get me out. 
Gotcha. And then so then after so after you post bond, what what, what happens next? Did anyone like did they contact you? Did they give you any, any idea of what they were going to charge you with? Well, um, I was pretty much given a court date, mm-hmm. and you're talking about as far as the courts go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was given a court date, and I went through a, a preliminary exam. They ended up putting me on house arrest on a tethered device. That was the compromise, and, and uh, there was no gun found. There was uh, uh, I didn't find the evidence of another gun to trial, so that was a year, uh, wow. a year and wow. maybe three months later. To then I had the evidence that I could prove there was another gun. Gotcha. Okay, we're gonna take a quick we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll keep talking. <laughs> 